In this video, I'm going to share with you a few tips about some of the tricky spots from this piano sonata, how to approach them, how to play them. And for those of you who want to improve this piece substantially, please follow the link in the description and you will find a comprehensive course packed with information and uh, various tips about uh, physiology, efficiency of um, piano playing in this piece, how to master uh, all these tricky spots. And of course, we'll be speaking a lot about style of Chopin and interpretation. So the first tricky spot in this sonata happens already on the second page, obviously. Mm -hmm. So in order to master uh, those double notes, whenever you uh, play these double notes, you connect on legato just the upper voice, releasing the lower voice, and always returning the weight of the hand toward the higher note, like that, like that. Boom, boom, like that, you see? This is important in order to uh, teach your hand to be light at the lower voice. And then when you, uh, um, when you approach the end of the position, when you approach the thumb, boom, you go opposite. You turn your hand counterclockwise, immediately flipping other fingers over uh, you flip them over the thumb. So you go like left, right, left, right, left, like that. Boom. And then again, boom, boom. You can even exaggerate that motion when you learn. because that lower voice m uh, must be really, really um, light, otherwise you might get stuck. And then of course learning just the lower voice, making sure that it's very light, like that. And the last stage would be to polish that passage using uh, shaping in the wrist. So you see, you always moves in waves, deblocking your elbow. And another important thing to remember here is that it's not about speed, actually. Yeah, but in general, this uh, movement is not really quick. Yeah, and Allegro Maestoso implies um, that it should sound quite epic, quite um, wide, but not really, um, not really virtuoso in a bad sense of this word. So this is already a good tempo. So you don't really have to play that passage faster than that. The second movement, of course, is one big tricky spot, uh, at least uh, it's um, faster sections. That's why uh, it's important to learn the whole movement with a good support and uh, good control, uh, good tension control, making sure that you don't accumulate tension and, of course, shaping it with a wrist. Here. And, of course, not connecting positions like in this spot. Boom releasing the thumb, not trying to provide physical legato in uh, uncomfortable spots. And of course there are some tricks that you might do, for example, taking that B in the left hand, if your hand allows you to take uh, tense, and because then you would not need to uh, switch position. Although I know that there are, of course, obviously will be people that would say, no, it belongs to the right hand, it must be in the right hand. But actually in a cure edition, <laughs> it's written on the left hand clef, so we can just disregard those opinions because when you play on stage nobody's going to you know to to to, to judge you upon uh your hand distribution in the fourth movement of course there are also some tricky spots like for example these passages <laughs> here the remedy is simple you just play them in a tempo in which you can uh articulate all these uh, chromatic lines, because all that is incredibly sweet. And should be uh, leggero, but very, very expressively. And uh, for that reason, you can't really play it in a maximum speed, because then you will lose that sweetness. And it should sound really sweet. And of course, flattened fingers. And and when you play uh, when you play slower, try to reach a uh, warmth in tone. Always reacting on such turns and shapes. And, mm, you can exaggerate all this expressiveness um, turns. And, and 
and then start in soft turn. And of course, reacting on Liebsen. In general, in the course, we will be speaking about this movement, and I will tell you why I personally believe that it's not about speed, it's not about um, tempo, and that a fast tempo here will only destroy the impression that you might make with this movement. And then, of course, we get to uh, the last. Uh, theme in this movement. Which is of course a um, uh, torture for many people in the left hand. Here we have to remember a couple of things. So first of all I know that uh, people with smaller hands who have not a wide stretch um, between fingers they uh, prefer the first time when situation allows uh, from bar 20, uh, 207 till bar uh, 226, they prefer to take the upper note of those figurations in the right hand, right hand, right hand, like that. So always taking the uh, upper note in the right hand, uh, which is rather confusing for me. But if you uh, nevertheless have larger hands, you can play that uh, without problems if you coordinate motions properly. So uh, first of all, of course, remember that such uh, turns Everywhere, this is a general rule, such um, patterns like, um, like for example here also, uh, we always play, play uh, going in the keyboard for the third finger, in the keyboard and out of the keyboard for the thumb. So you have a circle. Then of course remembering that you release fingers that are done, so the weight of the hand travels through the hand palm, always transferring it. So when you get to the thumb, no other fingers are working. And when you get to the fifth finger, you release the thumb. You remain uh, flat, so your fingers remain flattened. Of course, you don't crouch them, but the weight transfers. So think about uh, octopus. Of course you move around but not too much because if you move too much it also will distract you so you have to find a proper amount of that movement to reach here but not go further following inertia yeah so just as much as necessary not more and then of course r uh, remember that you can release um, the finger a bit faster when you need uh, when you have a stretch, f when you have uh, some wide distance, like for example here, if you can't cover that, you just boom, learn it with with the gap, releasing the fifth finger faster and sacrificing physical legato, boom. And when you release, quickly, you use that time for uh, quickly replacing your hand, boom, boom, release, release properly releasing the finger, but making small gaps in order to get used to the idea that you can actually release fingers faster. And of course, uh, don't uh, forget that one forte in Chopin, it's like nothing. It's a very, lim it's a very modest dynamics. Yeah? And we still have to spare uh, a lot of uh, energy for the final climax that comes a few pages later. So your left hand is supposed to play mezzo piano maximum. Anyway. In So if you want to play with any kind of voicing and mark some voices, like for example this bar 214 and so on, we might follow the uh, line of the lower voice. But if you do that, just remember that as soon as you hit the key, you nevertheless release it. Especially when you mark, because this is exactly where we um, tend to get tense and yeah, hold tension. And the last uh, spot for today, for this video, is of course this uh, beautiful passage. Here, of course, we have to remember uh, that, uh, well, first of all, nice fingering. Always playing uh, with the same fingering, one, two, four. One, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. 
Yeah, it's already it re, it, it already resolves like seventy uh, percent of problems. Then always remembering that we shape each motif uh, with motion out of the keyboard, in, out, in, out, in, always like that. And then of course, uh, just for your, just not to get confused, uh, because it's uh, if if you coordinate your motions and uh, use a proper fingering, of course, it's not difficult to play, technically. But uh, you might just get confused while playing that uh, passage. That's why learning it in different ways, like for example, one note and then a third together, and always uh, lean on the first note, release on the second. So in, out, in, out, in, out, always like that. Mm. So at first mastering this kind of simplified version. And then of course when I was preparing to a concert, uh, I usually tend to learn such passages from all the possible ways. Like for example, skipping the second beat here. Mm. Like that, so you play just the first bit and then just the second. And at the last bar of that passage in uh, 267, of course, it would be great if you also can control your tempo a little bit and slow down just a tiny bit. That would allow you to increase control and also to um, increase dramatic effect. Especially it will work great if you will be able to start this passage much, much softer. <laughs> And it will sound quite exciting actually. So that's it for today. Please check out the full course following the link in the description and see you next time.